I got a bunch of questions about some recent headlines which said that Stephen Hawking's famous theory of black hole evaporation may just have been proven by a deep sea measurement of one neutrino. That sounds somewhat flaky, doesn't it? How can one single neutrino settle anything, let alone a 50-year-old problem? We need statistics. Yes, but sometimes a single observation is enough. I mean, if an alien spaceship landed in your backyard, you wouldn't ask for a second one. You'd start live streaming. So what are physicists on about with that neutrino? Let's have a look. Stephen Hawking predicted in the 1970s that black holes emit radiation now called Hawking radiation. This radiation causes a black hole to lose mass and eventually evaporate completely. Unfortunately, the temperature of the radiation is inversely proportional to the black hole's mass. So the larger the black hole, the less radiation. For black holes of stellar mass or greater, the temperature is far below even that of the cosmic microwave background. We can't measure it. But very small black holes are hot and their radiation should be measurable. Such small black holes can't form from the collapse of stars, but they could have been created in the early universe from overdense fluctuations in the nuclear plasma. They're called primordial black holes and are also one of the hypotheses for dark matter. Some of those primordial black holes would have evaporated already. And since the temperature of the black hole increases as the black hole loses mass, they go with a final very bright bang. And that brings us to the new paper. Black hole evaporation contains all particles, but the smaller the mass of the particle, the more of them. So most of the black hole radiation is photons followed by neutrinos. And now this. Last month, scientists working on the Kilometer Cube Neutrino Telescope reported detection of an ultra-high energy neutrino event. This experiment is a collection of underwater detectors located in the Mediterranean Sea. These detectors hang on ropes like pearls. That way they can measure what goes on in a large volume. They estimated the energy of this neutrino event to be roughly 100 to 200 200 peter electron volts. It's called peter because it's where our prefixes start petering out. Just checking if you're listening. It's called peter because it's the fifth power of 1000 and someone forgot that penta has an N. That makes it the most energetic neutrino ever detected. For comparison, the previous record holder was detected by the ice cube experiment in Antarctica. Their neutrino had just about a tenth of the energy of the new one. And that was already a factor 1000 higher than what the Large Hadron Collider produces. How do you neutrinos get such huge energies? Maybe from evaporating black holes. The idea goes back to a paper which appeared on the archive briefly after the neutrino announcement in February. The authors look at black holes that would be evaporating today, but I think one doesn't need that, as the neutrino could have been traveling for a very long time, billions of years indeed. Yes, super highly energetic neutrinos are indeed one of the key predictions from evaporating black holes. By the way, this video comes with a quiz that lets you check how much you remember. Are there any alternative explanations? For the time being, not really. The astrophysical events that you think are the most violent, like supernovae or black hole jets, don't reach that high energies. At least no one knows how that should work. So this one's a real mystery for now. Can one test it? Well, yes, you can do cross checks. If evaporating black holes produced such highly energetic neutrinos, they should also emit photons of similarly high energy. Now photons interact much more than neutrinos do, so they are less likely to reach us, but they should do on occasion. What would it mean if it was Correct. It'd be a strong clue that dark matter is maybe made of black holes after all, at least part of it. On the bullshit meter, I give it a 6 out of 10. On the one hand, primordial black holes are a real possibility that's been somewhat understudied. On the other hand, I suspect it won't be long until astrophysicists come up with some other explanation. 
That one neutrino might have been the final whisper of a dying black hole. And all we did was write a paper about it. Science isn't just interesting, it's also a great inspiration. That's why I'm always looking for new science stories. My go-to place for this is Nautilus magazine. Nautilus has a digital and a print version and it's just a pleasure to read. They really put a lot of effort into writing and the graphic design is amazing. You notice immediately if you open the print version that it's a high quality production. I've written several contributions for Nautilus myself about physics, black holes, quantum gravity, quantum mechanics and you know the stuff that I normally write about. But I enjoy this magazine because it tells me what's going on in other areas. What I particularly like about Nautilus is that they cover all areas of science, from astronomy to economics, history, neuroscience to philosophy and physics. They'll pick the most relevant topics and give you all the context. You can join Nautilus as a digital-only member or get a print subscription. In addition to full access to all the stories in Nautilus, members receive benefits like priority access to events, exclusive products and product discounts. Like for example for the Ring and Zein collaboration with jewelry designer BP Bella or special Nautilus merch like their limited theoretical and applied hats. And of course I have a special offer. If you use my custom link joinnautilus.com slash Sabine you'll get 15% off your membership subscription so go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.